All right, so hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to be going through my uh, lecture on KERMA, collision KERMA, and absorbed dose. And I have 12 questions to go through. So I'll probably uh, split it up into problems one through six on the uh, first video, and then uh, carry on with problems seven through 12 on the second video. Uh, not too much else, so let's begin. Okay, so problem 1A, what is the definition of dose? So dose is the mean energy imparted by ionizing radiation to a given material per unit mass. For part B, what is the definition of exposure? So exposure is the total charge of ions of either sign produced in air when all of the electrons liberated by photons in a volume of air of uh, mass dm are completely stopped in air. So be another. Uh, so be careful with those definitions. Uh, there are some particular aspects. The total charge of ions of either sign. Moving on to part C. Uh, what does KERMA stand for? It stands for kinetic energy received per unit mass. There are some uh, some people are right uh, that KERMA stands for. Uh, Different, different words. I mean, this essentially is my favorite, so. Uh, but there are some, uh, depending on the textbook, they'll write uh, that KERMA stands for different things. Uh, for D, where does KERMA occur? Uh, it occurs at a point. Now for E, uh, what is mu TR over rho? And then give the units. So uh, mu TR over rho and mu EN over rho, um, after a while, the definitions will be intuitive, but um, notice that I'm giving the definitions with respect to uh, the mass attenuation coefficient. So, um, so yeah, so it's the mass energy transfer coefficient. Essentially, it's the uh, mass attenuation coefficient multiplied by the fraction of energy of photons transferred to charged particles as kinetic energy. The units are centimeters squared per gram, same as mass attenuation coefficient. The mass energy absorption coefficient, it's essentially the mass energy transfer coefficient minus the average fraction of secondary electron energy lost by radiative interactions, which is typically a Bremsstrahlung, but also uh, in flight annihilation. Uh, they all have the same units, cm squared per gram. So moving on to problem two. Uh, what is the formula to calculate KERMA? It's the uh, energy fluence times mu TR over rho. What is the formula for uh, collision KERMA? It's the energy fluence times mu EN over rho. Uh, now, the energy transferred to electrons by photons Essentially, it can be expended in two ways, by uh, collision interactions or radiative interactions. So moving on to uh, part C, what is collision KERMA? Essentially, it's when the uh, electrons dissipate their energy by the collisional interactions, typically ionizations. What is radiative KERMA? It's when electrons dissipate their energy by radiative interactions, like Bremsstrahlung. For E, what are the units of KERMA? It's the same units as uh, dose, so joules per kilogram or gray. So here's some uh, nice diagrams here, nice uh, nice pictures, and we'll put on some labels. So for problem three, uh, part A, in figure one, which is this figure, label kerma, collision kerma, and uh, radiative kerma. So where's kerma? happens at a point. It's right at that location. Where does a uh, collision KERMA take place? Along the uh, red electron. And where is their radiative KERMA? It's a photon uh, releasing off of the electron. Now in figure 2, which is this figure, uh, where is their Compton interaction taking place? So it occurs at A, right? Photon comes in, gets scattered off, Inter, uh, and then uh, interaction with the electron. And where is there a delta particle? 
happens at C, this location. Uh, for 3, where is their Bramstrola? It occurs at B, right? This is Bramstrola. And last part, uh, C. So in figure 3, where is their exposure? At this uh, blue location. That's where the exposure is. So let's move on to problem 4. So with problem 4, um, I'm going to show some, some plots. In the, uh, they're very easy to um, like overlook when you're studying the material, um, but they happen to be um, like this. This the, the plots within problem four are very common questions um, for uh, program material or uh, board exams or any other exams for that matter. So let's go through it. So for problem four part A, uh, draw a plot of log kerma and dose versus depth with no attenuation of the photon beam. So notice here you have the buildup region. This is a log uh, kerma or dose. So the, the, the log part is in there. As a function of depth, notice that uh, kerma and dose are equivalent past the buildup region. This is the, uh, it goes under equilibrium. For part B, uh, for a photon beam with attenuation, State which measurement is the largest uh, to smallest with respect to kerma dose and collision kerma with increasing depth. So it goes uh, dose, kerma, and collision kerma. And I'll, I'll show you uh, better with uh, part C. So draw a plot of log kerma dose versus depth with attenuation of the photon beam. So what would the plot look like? So this, once again, it's log uh, kerma dose versus depth. Uh, notice that uh, dose here builds up at the buildup region and then uh, carries on with transient equilibrium uh, along with kerma. Um, now, so if we were to say, I'm um, just looking back at uh, part B, which measurement is the largest for kerma dose, including kerma? It would be, and this is uh, non attenuation. Sorry, this is with attenuation. So it would be uh, dose, kerma, and collision kerma. Would be just slightly under kerma, right? Because there's a uh, collision kerma. Kerma is uh, equal to collision kerma and radiative kerma. The uh, collision kerma would uh, it would run parallel to kerma. Now for uh, part D, state how dose is related to collision kerma uh, with increasing depth um, in the case of uh, where there is attenuation of the photon beam. So essentially, um, when there is attenuation of the photon beam, you're not, it's not a uh, charged particle equilibrium, it's not, it's not radiation equilibrium, it is transient, uh, it's TCP, transient equilibrium. So the relation is going to be uh, dose is equal to uh, collision kerma, uh, and this is E to the exponent, uh, now this is the effective attenuation coefficient with uh, TCPE. In the x is the mean distance the secondary charge particle uh, carries their energy in the direction of the primary beam while uh, depositing it depositing it as dose. So that's it's quite a definition. <laughs> so moving on to problem five. So what is the formula for relating mu e n of a row with mu t r of a row? mu of n of a row is equal to mu tr of a row, 1 minus g. What is the formula for average energy transferred to kinetic energy of electrons? So the average energy transferred to kinetic energy of electrons is equal to mu tr over mu times, this is the uh, photon energy, the initial photon energy. For C, oh, uh, of course, uh, these quantities, mu tr, mu, mu tr over rho, these are all going to be from tables, essentially, right? You're going to look these up in the, uh, the tables in attics or whatever textbook. Now, moving on to C. Uh, what is the formula for the mean energy absorbed per interaction? So it's equal to mu en over uh, mu times the initial photon energy. Let's do some uh, quick calculations with these. 
And I've included the uh, quantities from tables along the right hand side. So moving on to D. Uh, so let's for a 10 MeV photon uh, beam into and out of water, let's calculate the uh, ETR, which is the average energy transfer to kinetic energy of electrons. So we plug in uh, mu en, which I've given 0.0. Uh, sorry, mu tr, 0 0.0162 over uh, 0 0.0222, which is uh, the mass attenuation coefficient along the uh, bottom. Notice that the uh, densities cancel out, right? And then I just have that incident photon energy, 10 MeV, and I have my value. Uh, for E, what is the... Um, this is the mean energy absorbed per interaction. Let's calculate it in this case. Uh, so here we have our uh, mu en, 0.0157, the mu over rho, 0.0222, times our initial photon. We get 7.07 .07 MeV. Now for F, let's calculate the uh, G, which is, now G, it's, it's the fraction of transferred energy lost to Bramster lung. So, Notice that they're saying it's the fraction of transferred energy. Um, so in this case, you can just rearrange this formula. I have, uh, and I can uh, rearrange it and put um, mu en over or mu en over mu tr. Substitute in the values, and I get a value of 0 0.031. Now, also notice that it's unitless, right? Because um, both of these have units that cancel out, so G technically, the quantity is unitless. And last question, which is G. Uh, what is the energy that's radi radiated away? It's essentially um, 7.30, which is uh, the average energy transferred to kinetic energy of electrons minus the mean energy absorbed per uh, interaction. And the answer is 0 0.023 MeV. So problem six, and uh, last problem to this lecture. So a six MeV photon with a fluence of one times ten to the eleventh centimeters to negative two interacts with water with mu tr of a rho of zero point zero one six two centimeters per gram. What is the average kerma in water? And remember, kerma's got units of gray or joules per kilogram. So let's uh, let's put our formula for kerma, which is the uh, energy fluence times uh, mu tr of a rho. And remember that uh, energy fluence can uh, be devised into uh, energy, which is 6 MeV, and fluence. That's how we get energy fluence. And then we sub in our MeTR over uh, rho. Now all we need to do essentially is a uh, unit analysis, because we need it in uh, joules per kilogram, which is equal to gray. And I can go ahead and uh, take these uh, same quantities. Uh, multiply 1,000 grams to for one kilo, one kilogram, and uh, uh, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 13 joules for MeV to uh, form unit analysis for 6 MeV to convert to joules. And I get a final answer of 1.56 uh, joules per kilogram. So uh, that's it for this lecture. Uh, problems 1 through 6, and I'll see you on the uh, second lecture, problems uh, 7 through 12. Thank you. Bye.